It is hard to conceive, but three days ago, both World Trade Towers rose 1,362 feet into the sky. Visit those same towers today. At their tallest point, they rise maybe 100 feet above the street. And while it's true there are six floors below street level, now filled with debris, engineers at the firm that built the building's best guess to account for the missing 1,200 feet of material from each tower is that large portions simply vaporized into the dust that rained down on New Yorkers immediately after the collapse. It was that powerful. Get out of here! We're talking here about 43,600 windows, 600,000 square feet of glass, 200,000 tons of structural steel, 5 million square feet of gypsum, 6 acres of marble, and 425,000 cubic yards of concrete, turned in good part into a cloud, says environmental medical doctor Stephen Levin. I was astonished at the degree to which solid materials were turned into pulverized dust as a consequence of that building collapse. I think it was striking. The Environmental Protection Agency has been sampling the dust, and one specialist told ABC they believe the clouds that appeared immediately after the collapse were mostly gypsum dust from drywall, cement dust, and plaster, which can cause problems. Cement dust is an irritant. Fine glass powder is also an irritating material. The EPA did find spotty levels of asbestos. A sample on a police car turned out dangerous. Another sample a couple of blocks away, not dangerous. But most interesting, in the mix, they are looking, they think, at specks of steel that used to be beams and elevators, marble from the lobby floor and facings. So what were once the strongest architectural elements in the two towers were pulverized. Large portions turned into clouds like this one. Still, there is this mystery. If some of the hardest materials were vaporized, how to account for the presence everywhere of paper? Fully intact letters, business forms, stationery. Paper is so fragile and combustible, and yet somehow, maybe because we have so much of it, it was everywhere. Robert Krulwich, ABC News, New York.